This deer is eating some corn when suddenly it looks up as if something is approaching. The camera jumps ahead and barely manages to catch this strange fleeting movement on the right side of the screen. The shadowy figure has everyone talking about the possibility of Slenderman, who apparently has been rumored to be in this forest for years. It kind of looks like it might be wearing a business suit and has an all-white head completely devoid of all features, but it's hard to tell for sure. These contractors find themselves stuck on a roof after their ladder collapses, leaving them stranded 14 feet in the air with no way down. Soon they improvise a safety harness that looks to be little more than some cords haphazardly knotted together. I really doubt this design would realistically hold his weight but let me know what you think. They are trying to figure out what to do next when they see something in the distance. Watch his feet closely and tell me if he looks like he almost loses his balance at the end. There's a car! carefully lowers himself to the bottom and manages not to break the harness. The harness appears to be very loose at the end and could have come undone at any second. They show the drop at the end and it definitely looks like they were high up enough to cause some serious damage. Way of Vlogs is a YouTuber with a hidden talent that he's only recently begun to share with the world, a skill that he says only takes patience and practice to master. With a burst of mental energy, he can make a can roll towards him. Or maybe he pushed the table to make the can roll forward and yelled to cover up the noise. No strings whatsoever. As you can tell, see? Nothing attached to it. No magnets inside. So you can see I'm shaking around, no magnets. I personally think it might have been the latter, but watch again and tell me what you see. Next, he makes the object fall over without touching it. There could be a fishing wire in his hand, but if so, it should show up easily against his black clothes and it does not, at least not as far as I can tell. He definitely doesn't push on the table this time either. Still, if he could have made the object fall the other way, then it would show he was not using a fishing wire once and for all. I don't know about you, but at this point I'm still uncertain. So I guess people must have been saying he was using a string, because in the next video he holds his hands out to show he is not using one at all. However, as one commenter pointed out, he could have a string wrapped around his toe or something. It does kind of look like he might be moving his foot, but it's hard to say. But when he shows the cup without any hesitation, it makes what he says seem kind of legit. Now just to make sure that there isn't any strings or anything involved, look. I'll use my shirt. I don't really analyze many videos like this because I don't necessarily believe in them, but vlogs like this are enough to make me wonder. Give me your thoughts about this subject and tell me if you think this is fake or if he's able to somehow move objects through sheer will. A YouTuber named Maddie Ann thinks she sees something walking around her backyard, so she grabs a camera and a high-powered flashlight and sets out to record it. By the time she gets outside, she doesn't see it anymore, so she starts scanning the yard with her light to see if it will move again. The disfigured and misshapen shadow is what she finds. You can see it peeking from around a tree for a second before ducking back into the darkness. The shadow is not really the right size for a human and the head appears to be bald and shaped oddly. What's really weird is how the camera captures no features. If this was a person, then you should be able to see more details under the light. After all, the camera is able to pick up the brown color of the tree, so you would think that the person behind it would show some color too. Instead, Maddie Ann passes over a creature with a blank face. 
I don't think this was one of her friends, though I guess it could be someone wearing a costume with black mesh over the face. A YouTuber named Ice-T and his friend go out to an old local graveyard that's just off a long country road. After a couple minutes of exploring, he zooms in on what could be a creature or even someone on their hands and knees. What? Eddie? I mean, that could be almost anything. But did you notice the strange flash of light coming from deeper in the woods seconds before? When shown up close, it definitely looks like a pair of eyes watching them. The air suddenly grows very still and cold, so they decide to get out of there quick. But as they walk down the road, a bright red tint overwhelms the camera for no reason. Watch this part and tell me if you think it's a glitch from the street lamps or a warning from the other side. I have some at my dad's house. I have a really good one at home, but... Uh-uh, -uh, dad, look. My what? camera screen's like f***ing red. I don't know if that's like... What that's the That's a light. No, 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 hold up. I think I'm tripping, dude. Holy... It's red again! Look! They think they hear a sound nearby and take off. Are they running from a spirit or their imagination? Demons reside in this house. Published by Spooky Gotham in May of 2022. The ghost hunter heads inside to explore and is presented with some unruly activity. While he's outside of the demon house, he hears something inside. Totally, uh. And when he heads inside, it's made clear that he's not alone. Listen closely. Gautam continues to look around while the demons follow. He then hears what sounds like footsteps. And then, something is wailing in the distance. He finds bare footprints on the floor. They look fresh. The demons get louder. <laughs> Should he stay? It looks like the demons are inviting him to leave. If I were him, I would heed that warning. A vaguely human shape stands on the other side of a sliding glass door without making a sound. The faint outline never tries to get in, just hangs around the door for a while only to walk away. Apparently, this has been repeatedly happening for the past month, but nothing has ever been on the other side. I wish they would have opened the door to prove that this wasn't a friend of theirs messing with them, but I understand why they wouldn't want to put themselves at risk. Besides whatever this is, it doesn't really have much of a form, and I think I can see a smooth, flat surface where the face should be. It hardly looks human. If you don't want poltergeists keeping you up at night, you might want to erase that pentagram on the wall. Published by Seeker of Ghosts in December of 2021, a demon poltergeist is captured in action in this scary video. The crew enters the apartment to find a red pentagram drawn on one wall with unusual symbology drawn around it. It seems like whoever was here before was welcoming demonic activity with open arms, and the demons obliged. In one clip, a doll spins around on its own, sliding very quickly across the floor. Later, a string that's hanging across the room appears to be cut by something invisible. And then, the most shocking evidence, a stool flies across the room, scraping over the floor. <laughs> Are 
are the demons responding to the pentagram? What are they trying to tell these ghost hunters? I think the best decision is to get the heck out of there. There's nothing creepier than finding extra limbs in your home movie. Published to YouTube in March of 2015 by Patrick Cochran. This video of the haunted Hinsdale house in New York will leave you terrified. Located on McMahon Road in Hinsdale, New York, the Hinsdale House runs tours for paranormal investigators and scare fans alike, as it's known to be one of the most haunted houses in the area. The mysterious history of the place includes everything, from an exorcism to unexplainable events and sightings. Some of these events are recorded in the book, Echoes of a Haunting. Haunting is centered around the Dandy family who lived in the home with their kin in the 70s. The family claims a number of spirits visited them during their stay, and they even had a priest come on more than one occasion to perform an exorcism. The house went out though, and the Dandy family eventually fled the haunted place. A number of other families made attempts to call the Hinsdale house their home, but no one stayed for long. The present owner, Daniel Clays, doesn't live in the home, but allows paranormal teams to investigate the home. This video may show an investigation, or just a regular ghost tour. The group wanders through the haunted house in the darkness, which is creepy enough as it is. Then around 2.36 you see it. A strange arm swings into sight in the darkness. What is that? It certainly doesn't look human. YouTuber Tommy Poo writes in the comments, Of all the countless videos I have viewed on YouTube and other social media sites since 2009, this is only the second where I believe visual proof of paranormal entities has been digitally captured. YouTuber Tai Chiman adds, I was involved in the paranormal investigation show as a special guest star at the Hinsdale House two years ago and it has plagued me since with negative activity around me and my home. It seems Tai was certainly not alone in his experience. There's a reason no family ever lasted long in the Hinsdale House. Could you? Me neither. Some rather unexplained paranormal activity was caught on video when a ghost hunter by the name of Tracy puts their camera on the floor of a haunted house, one of the many haunted places in an unnamed ghost town they're exploring all alone. Soon, strange noises are heard as a shadow figure slowly plays against the wall. This might be an actual shadow figure, or someone walking across the window to create the appearance of one. The noises make sound like they could be special effects played from a speaker. Okay, so this isn't a video per se, but it was too eerie to pass up. This was recorded around 10 years ago in a home in Philadelphia. The family kept hearing noises coming from the basement, so they decided to hire a paranormal team who placed a recorder down there and waited. Nothing happened for three days, and then, at 3.12 a.m., they recorded this. The horrible recording continues to go on and on, seemingly forever. No video evidence was ever produced, but these possibly paranormal screams will continue to live on YouTube for years to come. Don't accept help from just anyone. They might not be what you think. YouTuber Scaryfield shares this creepy video which is trending in the Hindi-speaking YouTube community. The video is actually from YouTube channel True Horror Stories POV, and this horror story occurred on a dark road at night. In the beginning, the woman starts having car trouble in a cursed place. After pulling to the side of the road, a random stranger stops to help her. Ah, you ah 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 kereta saya dia tadi tak tahu asal tak boleh start. Ah, dia termati-mati dia pergi saya jalan tadi tak tahu apa pasal. Boleh cik tolong? 
The guy checks out a few things, but each time the woman attempts to start her car, it's still having trouble. The man then tells her that it's not a mechanical problem. But rather that something attached itself to her on the cursed route she took, and maybe he was right. While this is just a reenactment, these incidents are said to be based on true events. <laughs> well, if this happened to me in real life, I can't imagine I'd live to tell the tale. YouTuber named Chevalier Epstein has heard rumors of an old haunted campground that he wanted to explore at the end of a dusty, forgotten path. He finds some small buildings that are in relatively good shape for being abandoned. Still, the whole situation looks creepy even from the outside. On a bright and sunny day, when they go inside, they find it's been covered in graffiti and feel strangely unwelcoming, so they don't stay for long. Chevalier decides to turn around and take one last look at the campsite before leaving. Apparently, something was taking one last look at him as well. What? That door just creaked open. Oh! Their attention is still fixated on the open door when something much closer makes a noise nearby. I guess it could have been a mouse knocking something over or something like that, but the timing was a little too much of a coincidence for me not to include it on this list. Let me know if you think they really saw the door open by itself or if this was all set up. A YouTuber named Joey Concialdi is joking around with his friend when he pretends to dive under the covers to be silly. As he is doing so, the thin bizarre outline of a scrawny shadow person is seen behind him for a split second, and by the time he comes back up, it's gone. Joey is certain that this ghost sighting is real, but I'm wondering if it was just the banister seen a few seconds later. It looks to be in a different position and not as dark, and therefore probably was not it. YouTubers if new Fozzie encountered an unknown creature in the middle of the forest. Let's see if we can identify it. It's too dark to really tell what the creature is, and the creature itself is shadow like. But you can see its movements toward them. I really have no idea what this thing might be, but their reaction to it makes me think it could be dangerous. When you've got a place called the dungeon in a state lockup, you're bound to run into some chills down your spine. It was taken on a ghost tour of the Missouri State Penitentiary in 2017. The first shot in the video reads, Picture taken of the showers minutes before entering the dungeon. Notice the light at the top is clearly off. Let's take a look. Folks in the video appear to be trying to contact spirits within the building asking if they exist. According to the video, they've received responses, although it's hard to detect the hisses, moans, and spoken word responses in the clip's audio. The video also claims that the light at the top before entering the dungeon was off, while the light turned on after leaving the dungeon. Curious, or did someone just hit the switch? 
Whatever the case, the paranormal seems to be at large in Missouri State. It's probably time to plan a prison break. A TikTok user named Dixon83 catches a paranormal experience in the kitchen, which he had suspected was haunted for some time. His suspicions are confirmed when his cat trots through and the closest cabinet door swings open by itself, followed by what I think is a heavy exhale. His cat is definitely looking directly into the cabinet at something unseen. Tell me what you think it was. There's a reason no one parks here. Published by Haunted Forest Monsters in May of 2019, this creepy clip caught a mysterious figure on a parking lot security camera. Captured around 9 p.m., the dark parking lot shines as though it's recently rained. After a moment, a semi-transparent figure is seen traveling from the left side of the lot to the right. Yo, what the f it doesn't stop as it meets a median filled with trees and bushes but appears again in the next parking lot over. Is this a meter made phantom? Or did this once living being lose track of his car for so long he lost his life in the process of trying to find it? I know I see it. At first, Redditor Dawn Grager believes this sound was in her imagination, but then she recorded it. Listen closely. It sounds like a strangled scream. Some in the comments think it's just air escaping a container of some kind. Others think it's a trapped animal. I wouldn't rule out a portal to the fiery depths below, but those two theories also seem likely. This sound is for sure something you don't want to be imagining. We've all done it, almost choked on something while distracted. But what should you do if you find yourself in this position while you're alone? This CCTV footage shows how a guy almost passed away while prepping a restaurant to open. The guy is doing his rounds, wiping down tables and getting everything in order, when suddenly he slows down, hitting his chest a couple times. It's clear something is going wrong, but he doesn't seem too concerned yet. He attempts to continue with his tasks for a moment, but then realizes this is serious. Walking to the middle of the floor, he bends to touch his knees and appears to be trying to stay calm. As he continues to pound his chest and bend over, trying to eject the piece of gum that's lodged in his throat, he starts to panic. He cannot breathe. He attempts to shout for help but nothing comes out. While panicking more and more and getting increasingly unsteady from lack of air, he attempts to give himself the Heimlich with his hands. Still nothing. He then positions a chair to give him the Heimlich, bending over it and trying to fall the right way. Having already gone a couple minutes without breathing, he does this a few times. No luck. It's starting to look like a lost cause, but at the last second, the gum ejects from his throat. He is able to stand up again and looks incredibly relieved, as he should. He nearly passed away from a piece of gum. While streaming live at a New Orleans graveyard at night on February 8th, 2020, Franco TV encounters not the undead, but the living. In the beginning, he describes his first encounter with a man in the graveyard, explaining that he'd been warned that thieves in New Orleans like to come after people who explore the city's graveyards at night. He said he'd encountered this man twice already in this episode, explaining that the man was on foot, had a book bag and approached him, passed him, and then circled around while he was outside of his car walking through the mausoleum. He feels a bit shaky from this encounter and says he doesn't know if he's going to exit his vehicle again, but he follows his audience's risky advice and does anyway. 
As Franco is out, walking around the creepy stone grave solo, he starts to feel unsafe again and after a time returns to his car. He is examining an above ground crypt from his vehicle when he hears some footsteps. He continues to drive around the cemetery saying he heard something from behind his car that sounded like a knocking. He says he can't get out of his car again because he thinks someone else is there. In fact, there he is. After turning around, Franco zooms in on a man walking toward him down the cemetery road. What is this man doing in a graveyard at night? Is he too live streaming for YouTube? It certainly doesn't look like it. Franco doesn't know what to do but continue to drive, passing the guy seemingly without issue. He speeds up, getting out of the graveyard as quickly as possible. As he tries to find the exit, he says the man was literally chasing after his car. He says he felt the man hit the back of it, and as he flees, explains that he must get out of there and find a safe place. He then warns viewers not to enter a New Orleans graveyard at night, as if we needed any warning after watching this. This house is supposedly haunted, and the family room reportedly has the most activity out of anywhere. As you can see in this close-up shot, there is nothing out of the ordinary about this mirror at all. But once the paranormal investigation is underway, a woman's colorless face appears in the upper left quadrant. She is staring directly at the camera with two black holes for eyes. Her thin lips and nose clearly visible. As far as I can see, there is nothing in the room that could cast such a strangely vivid reflection. When Joey Salvatore and his friends learn that their entire neighborhood is rumored to be haunted, they go to the local cemetery and try to get something on tape. They don't really find much and eventually come back home, but it looks like something found them and managed to attach itself to a friend named Roger. Now he is standing motionless with his back to them in a dark room and they are too freaked out to do anything more than secretly record his reflection in a mirror. After a while he sits down and stops moving completely, so they decide to put Roger in his room and check on him later. Roger is nowhere to be found, at least not at first. Wait, turn the light on. <gasps> what the f Roger! I'm the they are totally freaking out when Roger comes wandering back into the room completely fine, wondering what had happened. The group feels unsafe at this point and has no choice but to send Roger on his way. Eventually Roger says that he was just playing a joke on them, but it's unclear if he really means it or if he is just in denial. A supposed mermaid was captured sunning itself on the rocks beside this murky lake. Posted to TikTok, you may want to avoid the water after seeing this clip. Did you notice that there are two of them? You can see the other one's head peek up. Will some in the comments say this is a real mermaid? And mermaids, in fact, look scary like this. I'm not so sure about this video's authenticity. I did some digging online, and it turns out the video's original source is YouTube channel, JJPD Producciones, which specializes in CGI. Whether you choose to believe this is real or fake, it is definitely an impressive reimagination. Believe it or not, this doll is scarier than she looks. Published by Rota X in November of 2020, they encounter this creepy doll directly upon entering, covered in red. Let's hope that's paint. And then this happens. <laughs> After they're running away as fast as they can from the demon doll, they realize the presence is still with them. It makes itself known via the EMF meter. Has whatever possessed that doll latched onto them? Time to call an exorcist. If you've seen the James Franco film 127 Hours, then you know the story of Aaron Ralston. Ralston was 26 when he ventured into southeast Utah's Blue John Canyon. On April 26, 2003, the climbing enthusiast was scaling down a slot canyon when a boulder he was standing on came loose and caught him between a rock and a hard place. 
literally. His right hand was trapped between the boulder and the canyon wall. Ralston hadn't told anyone he was heading out to climb, so with the knowledge that no search party would be scouring the canyon for him anytime soon, he knew he'd have a disturbing decision to make. But before he made the decision to cut off his arm, he made a video diary of what could have been his last days. The diary was meant as a final message to his family and friends, as Ralston was sure he was going to pass away there. Apart from a short clip of the video diary, none of the footage has been released. Ralston says it is a private video for himself and his family. However, the producer Zenfranco watched the footage to prepare for 127 hours. A transcript was written verbatim from his video diary. If you're squeamish, you probably wouldn't want to see the whole thing anyway. Then again, if you were squeamish, you probably wouldn't be watching this video. These situations usually end badly. This one, although extremely frightening, ended as well as it could have. It was February 8, 1977. Tony Kiritsis, a 44 year old man from Indianapolis, was set to meet about his mortgage with Richard O. Hall, a mortgage broker. Kiritsis wasn't making his payments and a request for an extension was denied. Kiritsis was afraid that Hall would sell his property for the equity after they'd gone in for the meeting as normal. Kiritsis led Hall out of his office with a barrel held to the base of Hall's neck. This wasn't a spur of the moment plan in action. Kiritsis had thought this through. The barrel was wired to Hall's neck, while the trigger was wired to a ring he wore on his index finger. This meant that Hall would perish if he tried to run away, and he would perish as well if someone tried to retrieve the gun from Kiritsis. Before leaving the office, Kiritsis also phoned the cops to tell them that if they attempted to intervene, Hall's life would end. He then led Hall through the streets of Indianapolis to Kiritsis's apartment, where he held Hall captive for three days. Kiritsis's demands that his debt be eliminated, that he wouldn't be prosecuted for his actions, and that the mortgage company admit fault. This is the scary part that was caught on camera. Kiritsis alerted the news media that Richard Hall would be reading a statement that he, Kiritsis, had written. Hall could barely speak due to the strain from the wire against his neck, so Kiritsis ended up reading the piece himself live on air. His delivery lasted for 23 minutes. When Kiritsis got what he wanted, Hall was released unharmed. Police, of course, prosecuted Kiritsis, despite promising otherwise, and he was found not guilty by reason of insanity. He was thrown in a mental institution for 11 years. Later, he apologized for what he had done and said that he never wanted to hurt anyone. Thankfully, he didn't. Final video is about as close as it gets. First, a piece of manufacturing equipment malfunctions and causes a pileup of white-hot steel material. The pressure around the blockage continues to build until coils of unformatted steel shoot across the factory floor. The first worker sees the carnage and runs in a zigzag pattern to escape. The second worker, a supervisor from the looks of his clean white shirt, has his back turned and doesn't notice anything until it's too late to react. A rope of liquid steel stops short at his feet and piles all around him. He escapes only to have the machinery behind him burst apart and send more rivets of steel his way. The equipment is shut off and more of the substance falls to the exact spot where he was just standing. Take a mother records her child happily pressing Play-Doh into different shapes, completely unaware that the toy moves twice on its own. The first time is almost unnoticeable, so watch closely. The second time, however, is much more obvious. I mean, look again and you'll see both of the kid's hands are completely off of the toy when it suddenly somehow moves towards him. This video is one of the few instances where I have absolutely no counterpoint to disprove it, and I can only conclude that what you've witnessed is almost certainly paranormal. Did you know that man has explored more of Mars and the moon than we've explored the depths of our own oceans? Which leads us to some of the strangest oddities on Earth, including this one. The 
giant pyrosome looking like a large transparent tube slide. A giant pyrosome is comprised of thousands of identical clones of zooids that form an up to 60 foot hollow cylinder that can be wide enough for a grown man to fit inside. The free floating tube appears like a ghostly discarded piece of see through fabric known as sea pickles. Giant pyrosomes are bioluminescent, which means you can see them glowing blue green in the sea at night. Published to YouTube by Ross Overstreet in June of 2018, and supplemented by footage from Luis Bringas in December of 2014, this giant pyrosome off the southern coast of San Clemente Island will send you off the deep end. These videos show the creature in action, or rather in action as it floats unobtrusively near the sea floor. What would you do if you crossed paths with this oceanic nightmare? Would you be brave enough to swim through? And more importantly, would you make it to the other side? This footage was apparently found inside the Penhurst Asylum, which is a real abandoned place located in Pennsylvania. The footage contains two students exploring the clearly abandoned building, and while nothing too bizarre happens in this footage, the backstory and timing are enough to make you scream. The two student explorers were never seen again after this. Well, that is terrifying enough. I want you to focus on the timestamp in the corner. Notice how they are ending up in new spots in the asylum at a faster and faster rate. Near the end of the video, the pair end up in the forest at a rate where the speed they are traveling is simply inhuman. What do you think is happening here? If this footage is real, then it is a case where the happenings would never be believed, if not for it being recorded. Years ago, I analyzed a video of a giant humanoid creature seen roaming the desert in Portugal. While well, new evidence of the creature is making fresh rounds on the internet, and this photograph supposedly shows what it eats, which unfortunately is us. A strong looking man with a crew cut and fatigues is no match against this creature as it pulls him towards its open maw. He is not wearing civilian clothing. If anything, his outfit matches those worn at the special ops base where the original video was taken. All of the finer details of the creature seem to match as well. The dramatic bend of the back leg compared to the more developed upper arms, its cone-like head, its unnatural slouch are all there, and according to this picture, it's apparently a cyclops creature as well. Of course, there's a good chance that this is photoshopped. If it was real, I think that there would be an accompanying video, or at least more than one picture. If anything, for the sake of the person about to be devoured, I really hope this isn't real. Kalen Speaks published this video in 2013. In the description, he writes, So I wanted to drop a skit, but something paranormal happened in my house last week, and I'm not talking about a little shadow. In the morning, when my family was either out or sleeping, a garbage bin in one of the rooms of my house got thrown out at my dog, and we caught it on camera. This is completely real. Kaylin says this isn't a prank. So let's take a look at what happened. She'd have to be behind it and hit her with her nose or her, her paws if she, she could somehow. But she's not. She's right beside it. And look, she's running. She's hauling out of the office. She's scared. Something. Kaylin shows the security footage of the downstairs hallway. He says no one was on this first floor at the time. In the clip, the dog runs in sliding under a hallway table, while a small garbage bin with garbage in it slides in alongside her. Then the dog darts into another room. Kaylin thought initially that the dog had just been greedily eating from the trash, and then suddenly got spooked by something and darted off, knocking the trash bin over and taking it with her for a short distance. Then he explains why he thought differently after reanalyzing the video. He says in order for the bin to be launched that far with such force, the dog would have had to hit it, and in order to hit it, she would have to be behind it. But she was running beside it at the beginning of the clip. The bin is also rolling for an inordinate amount of time. After hitting the wall for one or two minutes, according to Kaylin, while the dog watches it in fright from the hallway, at some points the roll of the bin slows and then it speeds up again. Is there a poltergeist controlling the trash bin? We can only guess. A young boy is watching television by himself and starts making a video for fun. 
After a while, he needs to do something in another room so he puts the phone down for just a minute and accidentally records this creeper at his window. Someone peeks through the window multiple times over the course of a minute. I think those might be metal bars on the windows. So maybe this area has been dealing with break-ins, in which case there was about to be another. Then again, this strange floating orb appears as soon as the figure disappears, so maybe this is some kind of paranormal intruder instead. This is it, the scariest forest to explore in terms of ghost hunting. The location of this scary forest is far more well known than its actual name. That's because you have to go to the Romanian countryside of Transylvania to get here, the same place where the legend of Dracula began. Okay, so this place is called the Hoya Bachu Forest, and there's a good reason why not too many outsiders know about it. Locals believe that even mentioning its name is enough to curse you with a lifetime of misfortune, which is making me wish someone else narrated this video. Ask around for long enough and you might find somebody willing to tell you about a shepherd who, hundreds of years ago, went into this forest with 200 sheep to let them eat grass and never returned. Peasant villagers soon lost their lives to his vengeful spirit Spirit, and the area's haunted reputation quickly spread. As more lives were lost, the number of ghost sightings continued to grow. I'm not going to get into all of the individual haunted forest stories because there are simply too many to recall, but here are three scary videos taken in the woods that are worth mentioning because they help back them up. The first video was taken by a YouTuber named Bregis on July of 2014, and it shows in the center of the woods a circular clearing where absolutely no trees will grow. In fact, trees have not grown here for hundreds of years in a perfectly symmetrical circle and nobody knows why. Maybe this is where the shepherd and his flock all perished. Whatever happened here, there's something unholy about this area that always makes visitors nervous. And to further prove my point, in the center of this circle are two evenly spaced patches of dug up earth that look like they could be unmarked graves. What do you think is buried here? Videos of these woods are scary enough during the day, but exploring the cursed woods at night is even scarier. On July 29, 2017, a YouTuber named Tanner Roth thinks he's brave enough to withstand a 3 a.m. haunted forest challenge in Transylvania. The trees start to look twisted and creepy, so they know they are close to the forest's haunted heart. See, it's how, how, how knotted it is. These knots don't happen anywhere else outside this forest. I guess it's another way that they were saying that the, the, the forest is... is... Dude, it just got super cold over here. The camera goes out of focus as if a spirit is face to face with Tanner, and a passing chill makes his nose run. In his words, It, it, it kind of feels like we shouldn't be here. I couldn't have said it better myself, especially based on what he sees shortly thereafter. Tanner Roth senses something near and so he calls out for Anthony, his camping buddy. He feels especially watched here, and look at what happens at 4 minutes and 28 seconds. No sooner does he say somebody is messing with me when an odd red light shows up. Tanner finds Anthony passed out at the campsite, cozy as can be. Anthony didn't pass the 3 a.m. haunted forest challenge, so it wasn't him. Strange glowing lights are said to be a common occurrence in this forest, and one of the reasons why locals don't dare to go near. On April 14, 2018, a paranormal investigation team from Italy called Aspit journeys to the center of the forest in search of a scare. This is what they find close to the haunted circle. It kind of sounds like a frog to me, but maybe not based on what happens next. K2! K2! As they strain their ears, they hear it again right as the K2 meter goes off, which makes it paranormal in my opinion. Sheep can make really shrill noises, so maybe it's the shepherd's wicked spirit. The pit crew runs some more experiments, such as asking the spirit to make their flashlight blink, which it does easily, and we no longer hear any animal noises at all during this time. 
The forest is eerily quiet. Five minutes later, it decides to skip all of their testing and directly reveal itself. <laughs> <laughs> Much to their horror and to my fascination, the light they see is remarkably similar to the light that Tanner Roth saw a year prior. Except for a noticeable difference in color, they both saw a sphere of light roughly the same size in the same area, and probably therefore the same entity. The fact that two different teams from two different countries nonetheless would record the same thing is all the proof that I need to conclude that this forest is probably beyond haunted. Since the legends are apparently true, I can only imagine what the repercussions are on them for witnessing it in person, not to mention what will happen to us for seeing it on video. Sometimes those abandoned buildings that some urban explorers enter are not entirely abandoned. In fact, in some cases, they're the stomping grounds for the occult. Published to YouTube by Lego Papa TV in March of 2020. Papa was likely not expecting to be chased down by a hooded stranger performing a ritual in a house where lives have been taken, but that's exactly what happened. He writes, This is probably the scariest moment of my life I ever had. When moments like this happens, out of nowhere you put yourself in a situation that your mind goes blank. Papa explores the dark dwelling, which certainly gives off an aura that something terrible happened here. The house is utterly destroyed, littered with garbage, ransacked, covered with graffiti, and generally torn apart. As many in the comments point out, there were wet footprints at the doorstep, which may indicate that somebody recently entered the house, or was in fact there, or was still, in fact, there at the same time. And soon, Papa discovers he is not alone. As he wanders throughout the house, he hears noises. I know she stepped upstairs. Hello, anybody here? He even sees a flashlight as someone searches for him while he hides out in a bathroom. For some reason, despite all this, he continues exploring the house, ending up in the basement. But when he hears distinctive footsteps overhead, he hightails it out of there. Likely because it dawns on him that if he was to remain in the basement, he'd be completely trapped. It seems he escaped just in time. As he runs off into the woods, he glances back to capture a hooded person on camera, standing on the porch steps. If he had left a minute later, who knows what might have happened. The adventurer Abdullah Al Anbar heads to the Devil's House of Evil Horror, an abandoned house somewhere in Saudi Arabia that's haunted by a poltergeist, or also known as a jinn. It doesn't take the explorer very long to discover how the house got its nickname. Whatever is in here is beyond creepy. Much to his surprise, every door opens at the same time. It's like he's being invited inside. We all saw the door slam by itself. But I bet you didn't see this elusive shadow person crouch out of sight when he first enters at 5 minutes and 10 seconds. His flashlight begins to flicker as paranormal energy gathers all around. He can sense something malevolent is near. The door is slamming repeatedly by itself. No one is hiding on the other side. That's when the jinn tries to keep him here forever. Bismillah. <laughs> 
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ايش اللي سوي هنا استغفر الله العظيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله بسم الله Heavy footsteps follow him down the stairs as he bolts from the house of evil. I'd say the house lived up to its name that night based on his paranormal evidence. A real demon sighting is caught on camera according to an uploader named Esoteric Boy, a dark shadow haunting his room. He lightens the photo to reveal a tall mysterious figure with horns. Strangest of all, the alleged demon has a goat-like face and no reflection in the mirror, considering he has editing software. I think this could possibly be photoshopped, but if not, then it's time never to go into the room again. Ready to hear one of the most bone-crunching sounds in the world? This was captured at the Australian Reptile Park. The bone crunching noise gives me the chills beyond belief. According to the BBC, saltwater crocodiles take the lives of an estimated 1,000 people per year, many more than sharks do. Would you want to run into one of these monsters? Me neither. When American Airlines Flight 280 took off from Seoul, South Korea, heading to Dallas, none of the 240 passengers aboard the flight knew they were about to take the scariest ride of their lives, but that's just what happened. <laughs> The plane encountered severe turbulence, which was caught on camera by passengers. The turbulence was so severe that the flight was diverted to Tokyo. After 15 people aboard the flight were injured, five of them being hospitalized, one passenger, Mark Stanley, an attorney in Dallas, told the morning news they were diverted after 45 plus minutes of insane turbulence. The remaining passengers were put up in Tokyo for the night, but not sure if I'd have the stomach to get back on a plane the next day. This deer appears to have a massive growth that has taken over the entire right side of its head. I was thinking that this could possibly even be exposed brain, but I doubt it would still be alive if that were truly the case. Either way, the deer appears to be very much alert and not in a vegetative state, which suggests that this is just a growth. But then again, maybe it's going through the early stages of CWD and still has some brain function. The quiet wild animal seems to be completely unafraid of the camera and makes no attempts to get away. Based on its lack of a reaction, I would say this specimen is halfway through becoming an actual zombie deer. Ken1082 catches what he claims is a mysterious light that's not part of a storm. It almost has to be a storm, but a user named Combat points out a strange and creepy figure standing in the doorway when the lightning flashes. The lights flicker on and off in the room to reveal a person who was apparently standing there the whole time. Let me know if you see them and what you think it was. This video was posted on the Chills Narrator subreddit, so I wanted to know what you make of it. If you ever get lost in your own little world while driving, you may be missing out. Fear is right outside your window. YouTuber Nabs Maya captured this unusual figure on camera, and they are disturbed by it. Watch closely. Because no guys are coming. What they're looking at is that bright pale figure in the middle of the field. It appears to be standing idle. Though the camera is shaky, the figure doesn't move. You can even see a bird fly past it, undisturbed. What is this thing? 
It's difficult to tell from such a distance. I think it could be anything. A person, a scarecrow, even a ghost. But these guys are going to have to get closer to test out my theories. A man in Saudi Arabia films himself working outside when he almost gets seriously messed up. At first, it looks like he simply loses his balance. But that's not what he claims, and it's not what the video evidence shows. He says something in the desert pulled on his leg. A supernatural force that wanted him to fall. Watch again and you'll see his leg does go backwards. But it doesn't go very high so maybe he could be lifting it himself. So while this would be a creepy situation, it's hard to say if he's really telling the truth or making it up for attention. Judging from the comments, about two thirds of the people who have watched this video worry it's real. Do you believe them? A strange creature sighting in Russia on a store camera is about as creepy and mysterious as it gets. Two people are standing outside late at night, and all of a sudden one of them is dumped on the ground. You can see something invade his space. At 12 seconds just before he falls, the other man tries to help but is of little use. Whatever has a hold on his friend is too strong, and so he runs back into the store. At 21 seconds, something briefly appears to hover over the poor man. A strange creature creature with little shape, perhaps paranormal, and he is pulled off camera. After 10 seconds, it looks like the creature has left and so the second man goes to check on his friend. At 42 seconds, something invisible splashes a puddle in front of him and his friend is flung through the entrance. Low quality CCTV videos are pretty easy to edit, so this video might be a fake. What do you think? Maybe you aren't paranoid, but you might be followed. Published by Jasco in June of 2021, this is part 8 in a series of Randonautica experiences over several days. Jasco and his crew are using the app down in Florida State. During their Randonautica tour, they find an old sofa in the forest. But, uh, Wendy's? What we're here for is this. Yeah. After some coaxing, Jasco lifts a mysterious item that's tucked into its cushions. That's like a video game or something. What the hell? Is that an iPod? Yeah, what's one of the old iPhones? <gasps> no, Why is it like a saran wrap? Oh, uh. Wait. That item turns out to be an old iPhone saran wrap to the letters C and F. Feel a little bit safer. It is an iPhone. Look at that. iPhone. iPhone Bro, I always wanted to add like a coral one. That's so weird. Okay. What? We just found a phone in the middle of nowhere. I know, that's super old. They try to turn the iPhone on, but its battery is empty. Later on the mission, Jasko says Chris has been hearing something all day, and now he hears it too. Like, where else could it be? I don't know. Dude, I don't know. Yo, like, what would literally, it be? hold on, hold on. Can we talk about something quick? You've been hearing things like all day long. Like, you're like, bro, what is that? Like, I hear like some type of beeping. A beeping sound. Jen finds its source. Chris! What? It's a tile wow. tracker, bro. That's one of those little a tile tracking device. She says she found it in between the middle console. They run it over, but it's still functioning. Hold on, I'm gonna. All this time they were being tracked. Someone was in their rental car the day before and planted it. But who? My guess is someone with ill intentions. What happens when the next generation wants nothing to do with the family property in the middle of nowhere? Published by Jordan Sovis, Jordan and Chris explore a house that's been abandoned out in the country for a couple of years. They crawl under the garage door and jimmy their way in using a credit card. Inside, they find a lovely piano for the ghost pianist to play. And while searching the place, they spot someone outside. Dude, there's a dude outside. What? Hasn't this place been abandoned for like... Ever? Is this the home's caretaker? Or something else entirely? Using a pendulum, they start asking the ghosts questions. They ask if they're in good spirits, and they're told no. Later, they ask the spirits if they can make their presence known, and the spirit answers, Are you present with us here in this house? As they start to panic, the ghosts don't let up. Did that seriously just happen? Calm down. Calm down. What is going on? Was that you? 
for some reason, even after all of that, the guys stay. They again ask if there are spirits here, and this time the spirits reply with a song. The piano keeps playing, even after they've raced out of the house. No way, dude. Dude. No way. Did that piano just seriously play by itself? Do it again. Do it again. Do it again. Still, they return. The piano continues to play and then this happens. Not long after, the ghost goes full on poltergeist. Now we can see why this home was abandoned in the first place. What was it? Go. You go first, man. I don't want to be in this Dude, place. I don't want it straight up. Holy <laughs> Dude, what? Why are you laughing right now? Seriously. What is going on? I'm delirious. <laughs> These friends travel to an abandoned church in Wales that gives all three of them a sinister feeling before anyone steps foot inside. It may have been nice when it was first built, but with ivy growing up the side and dirty water pooling around the foundation, this church looks corrupted, the perfect place for spirits to roam. That is proper evil looking church. The inside looks trashed by partiers, cans everywhere. They think they can hear faint church bells in the wind, but unfortunately nothing picks up on camera. Still, the feeling that they are not alone only grows more persistent with every step, and as they cross a large empty room in ruins, commenting on how evil it feels, they do pick up two anomalies. But look, evil. What's that done? Dare I say a really good job of like securing it though. I'm almost positive that the first anomaly was a lens flare caused by light coming through the window, but the second sighting, the shadow person is much odder. I would say that this is his shadow except there is no lower half, so it might not belong to anyone in the group, or anyone alive for that matter. Most videos of unidentified flying object sightings are out of focus or simply blinking lights. This one is the opposite of that. The video shows a saucer shaped flying object sitting in an open field near forest and mountains. You can see at least one figure outside the vehicle standing to its left. A close-up shown later in the footage reveals that the creature is the quintessential Martian. Overly large cranium, long thin limbs and all. After the Martian returns inside, a launching sound is heard. As the vehicle's engine revs up, in an instant the saucer shoots straight upward. The suddenness of the launch causes the person holding the camera to drop the shot downward before racing away on foot. What would you do if you encountered this at the edge of the forest? I just know I wouldn't be sticking around to find out. I don't want to go to Mars just yet. Emergency workers gather outside of a room where something terrible has happened and lives were possibly lost. As the camera zooms in, it catches a scary looking figure peering back at them. Its neck twisted so many times that it has become long and thin. The closer they zoom in, the more facial detail I see. Its face is half shrouded in darkness, but I can see the eyes, and it has tall black hair. Or maybe it's simply a crack in the wall. Exploring with Danny is back, this time at an abandoned building rumored to have strange lights and other happenings. Within minutes of entering, they hear a humming noise that briefly morphs into strange piano music coming from the basement. As they round a corner, they find candles are placed in a circle. A woman with a pale face and long black hair turns to them, but I'm not exactly buying it. I mean, her shoes kind of look normal to me, so this could just be a regular person dressed up. Still, the way she continues to chase after them makes me wonder if she's a crazy person or if I'm wrong about her being a ghost completely. But skid or not, there really might be something lurking down there with them. 
Everyone is lurking at the corner on the left at the 7 minute mark, but what I want to know is what's up with the two different colored eyes in the back. Perhaps something was watching them this whole time. This giant flat creature is actually a beached oar fish laying on its side. A confirmed bystander pushes it back into the water with her paddle, which could be a mistake because it proceeds to head directly for the person holding the camera. Although it seems more concerned with getting away than taking a bite, this is still not an animal that I would want to have anywhere near me, especially in such shallow waters. It almost seems to make eye contact as it passes directly under her feet before straightening out and swimming away. A YouTuber named NoahDB5 hopes to find creepy haunted places to explore around his campus, and so Randonautica takes him to a nearby cemetery. But not just any cemetery. Oh god, there's more screaming as we're approaching the graveyard. A cemetery with scary screaming noises at night, and later on while exploring a different area, he hears the same scary noises again, this time from deeper within the woods. Okay guys, hold on. I'm not kidding. Something from the forested area, we're hearing noises right now. I hope it happens again because it's right by the river. So it could, what, what is that dude? This sounds like it could be some kind of wild animal to me, but other people are saying that this could be a mysterious creature like the rake, and that he is most likely being followed. Noah has asked if you would subscribe to his channel and check out his other videos like this one. Legend has it this former asylum is haunted, and this video appears to be proof of it, posted by Zombie Platypus to the Ghosts subreddit. The Redditor says this was filmed in what used to be the living quarters at a mental institution called CSUCI. The quarters are now a modern dorm room. The clip shows a plate of shrimp moving across the counter on its own for more than half a minute. Its movement is jarring, as if it's being nudged around the counter every so often. Zombie Platypus explains that they started filming when one of them saw a quick but long movement that made them scream. She says no magnets or strings were used, and the dishwasher wasn't on. Most commenters agree with Redditor, DieFitH, who suggests this may not be paranormal activity at all. He writes, If the bottom of the plate has a lip and it is wet causing a nice seal and you put hot food on the plate and if the counter is ever so slanted, it can cause the plate to move, the steam causing a hovercraft-like effect. However, the Redditor says that when they tried to recreate the situation under the exact same conditions, they never could get it to move like that. A few Redditors in the comments don't have an answer answer for the Redditor, but having visited the campus, acknowledged that the place made them uncomfortable and gave them the heebie-jeebies. Is it just the creepy history of the former institute that pushes us towards a paranormal explanation, or are former patients just hungry? I what is up? We are back, and right now we just hit a uh, random, abandoned, haunted, like, really haunted house, apparently. Uh, New Hope PA is well known for a lot of abandoned, maybe haunted paranormal sites. Alright guys, so like I said before, we are exploring a really haunted house in a really haunted town. Apparently, I don't know the exact story on it, but Tim, what was it? People left because this house for being so like haunted or like paranormal, yeah. stuff like that. Kyle McGran goes exploring upstairs and while filming random rooms, a person briefly appears in the mirror. It could have been one of his friends, but this person is covered in darkness despite standing in an area that's well lit. At the other end of the house is a small boarded up attic that fills them with dread upon entering. Bro, this room is creepy. Literally left a lot of stuff. Shoes. Yo, the movie is called Without a Trace. I know it was a 90s movie, but finding a videotape called Without a Trace in the middle of an attic of an abandoned house where the family mysteriously disappeared is not a good sign. Nor is anything that's stained red. Yeah, it's red in there. Oh my god. Some sort of scary voice is caught on tape, one belonging to a ghost or a demon that none of them seemed to hear at the time. 
They go downstairs into an old creepy basement that makes them feel so overwhelmed with fear that they only make it one step further before they turn around. Something tells me this is where the family still is. It seemed that whatever haunted this family has only grown stronger over time and drives Kyle's group away in less than 10 minutes. When you happen upon a cave carved into a mountainside, you might want to think twice before entering. Published to YouTube by The Highway 9 in September of 2017, this video serves as a warning to never ever go caving alone. The footage takes you through a deep and dark rock hewn cave. Along the way, bats are seen hanging from the ceiling, and a long black centipede like insect is climbing the walls. But the creepiest part is yet to come. As the YouTuber rounds a corner, he senses something deeper in the tunnel. He presses on, peering into the darkness, and seems to see a figure beyond. Highway writes, I'm not sure what I saw, but it scared the wits out of me. Needless to say, he fled the scene as anyone would. YouTuber Lee Staff 444 writes in the comments, This is what happens when you enter a cave full of bats, dusts, and insects. You find Batman. Whether this unfortunate explorer found that or something much more nefarious is anybody's guess. But I'm gonna err on the side of the second choice. A Twitch streamer named Jake is visiting another country and enjoying the downtown nightlife. It's getting really late and he's about to turn in when two girls he's never seen before walk up with huge smiles and start dancing with him. They're acting like they've known Jake for a long time while this guy in grey lurks in the background. Jake doesn't mind the attention at first, but he grows progressively more confused until one of them speaks in English so as not to alert the man nearby. This is behind You can see he's staring really hard at the women with a serious expression. He's also standing way too close and looks to be within grabbing distance. When he looks over at them again, they try to play it cool by jumping up and down in fake excitement and acting like they don't even notice him. In reality, they are literally too scared to make eye contact with him and they're turning to Jake for help. Jake hangs around for another few minutes until the man wanders off. The girls hug each other out of relief and quickly dart the other way. I really hope this man had second thoughts about whatever he was going to do, but something tells me he wandered off to find an easier target. This kind of video really shouldn't exist anywhere in this day and age, but sadly people like this creeper are still out doing weirdly bizarre things like this. Kudos to Jake for stepping in and putting a stop to it here. Have you ever met a ghost on a cruise ship? Well, here's your chance. Published on July 25th, 2010 by YouTuber Jim Van Eekhout, this video allegedly captures the whales of the Queen Mary Pool Ghost. The retired ocean liner was active from the 27th of May 1936 to the 31st of October 1967 on the North Atlantic. According to some, the ship is haunted and regular ghost tours visit the Queen in the wee hours of the morning to witness the supernatural. Not only that, but the historic treasure now operates as a museum, hotel, restaurant and all-in-one tourist destination. While it may seem like the ghost stuff was just tacked on for the charm of it. Some claim that a murder actually did occur on the ship in one of the staterooms, and the victim's ghost is said to haunt that room till this day. One of these tales seems to be that of a baby named Jackie who lurks near Queen Mary's pool. According to the uploader, there were no children in the tour group, which set out at 1 a.m., but listen closely. You hear that. It's a baby crying. The black and white video is creepy enough with the empty deserted pool below and the crowd standing around with blank faces, but then you hear that eerie wailing of an infant followed by the humming of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. It's enough to send chills up your spine. Oh. 
Although the humming is credited to one of the investigators, the baby's cries are credited to the ghost of Jackie, which leaves us wondering what happened to baby Jackie and why do her cries remain here? Theme parks are supposed to be fun and games, not the thing nightmares are made of. This Mr. Blobby theme park is a whole other story. Chugging along in the 90s, you may or may not recall this yellow and pink blob. Crinkly Bottom was Noel Edmonds' series of theme parks that popped up in England during the show's success, with one in Somerset, another in the north of England, and others scattered around the country, none of which lasted long. Why? Well, watch this video and you'll see. Not only were people unimpressed with the park's puppet shows and Blobby's kitschy catchphrases, Blobby's done blobbin home is like walking through an uncanny nightmare. The seriously disturbing park, marketed as a children's attraction, is more like a scene from a horror film. With distorted audio, Blobby welcomes you, but who wants to be welcomed to this chilling park? The theme of this park must have been, we will haunt your dreams. Footage from this frightening theme park will leave you reeling, and not in a good way. The adventurer Abdullah al Bari goes exploring an abandoned building in Saudi Arabia in search of a poltergeist, or a jinn as it's referred to in the area. There are many floors to explore and each one holds horrors of its own. He turns around to see a mysterious figure that could be a jinn or more likely the shadow of the banister in front of it. He continues to explore and the paranormal activity continues to stay one step ahead of him. The ghost keeps throwing objects at him, guiding him in a way towards a final confrontation that he is not ready to witness. He looks up in time to capture a glimpse of a scary round face peering down at him. Tell me what he says to it on his way out. Whatever he says seems to cause him much anger based on what happens next. <laughs> he quickly leaves before the spirit becomes any more upset. Exploring a haunted abandoned graveyard in the UK, YouTuber Staffordshire Paranormal Explorers hear something unexpected. Listen closely. Right, you've got to be dead careful with this place as well, because I've got the feeling that things can fall your home. Did you hear it? It sounds like the giggle of a child. Right, you've got to be dead careful with this place as well, because I've got the feeling that things can follow you home from here. So oh, or is it a ghost child? Either way, I think it's past its bedtime. Thank you so much for getting me to 50,000 subscribers here on my Clips channel. If you want to support, please press that subscribe button. Let's get to 60,000 subscribers next. Thank you.